All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin. And the first thing we did, and you could probably see a gap here, is we took out some castings, which I tend to do every week. We have just skipped the last couple of weeks. I also found some of the things that have been residing in the bin. We'll go over those. But I want to check on the slow versus fast food. We fed that 12 days ago, checked on it six days ago, and I expect most of it to be gone. Then we're going to look for the loofah that we put in here. And then finally, we're going to give them a kitchen sink feeding, which I'm excited to show you what that is. So first, let's look at these... This is a peach seed right here. And I finally brought out the pliers at the same time I found a peach seed. And these are just some old pliers. So let's go ahead and help break these down because I don't think that they're gonna make it. Oh, <laughs> oh, look at that. Anyways, what I was trying to say is I didn't think that they would be broken down in the worm bin, but maybe now they will be. So that right there is which inside the peach seed, if you're wondering. Let's get this one going too. And I made sure there was no worms that I could see in there. Oh, this one's a little bit harder to do. Oh, <laughs> another explosion there. And then this is the pine cone. It has been in here since April 9th, which was basically forever ago. And here's the mango seed that is on its last leg right here. This may be the last time we see this as I rip it up, but I'll put the dates of when all these were put into the worm bin. So let's go ahead and dig right in. And, oh gosh, right away I'm finding some chunky ones right here. Oh, 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 look at this. Okay, look at this right here. This right here is a mating pair. So let me get close and we'll try and focus the camera real well. That right there is a mating pair and you can see them connected. And what's gonna happen is each is going to deposit sperm into the other one and then they're both gonna get a cocoon that will form and it's probably, you can probably start to see it right there and they will slide out of the cocoon leaving two cocoons left for each one mating pair. Two worms, two cocoons. So pretty cool we were able to see that. Let's put them over here and let's keep digging for that loofah. All right, I think it was right in the center. And if we run into the slow food portion, there was a bunch of apples and a pepper left. And the only thing that was left in the fast food portion was some broccoli. So <laughs> look how many worms are in here. There's just a ton of them. Oh, oh, something's right here. Let's see what this is. Oh, wow, right there. This is the apple. So 12 days later, and we still have a pretty good chunk of apple right there. You can even see the apple seeds, but a definite worm ball right there. Oh my gosh, yeah. All in and out of this. So they are still working on the slow food, which is why we call it slow food. It takes them a while to consume it and turn it into castings. Put that over there. Again, just another part of that worm ball which is great. I love seeing the worms all junk together like that. All right, let's keep looking. So if this was the slow food, then over here would be where any semblance of a broccoli stem would be. And I think we found it. Wow, look at that. Tons of worms, but also look at this broccoli. They have basically eaten everything that wasn't a fiber out of it. And this was just a broccoli stalk we put in here. They ate the whole thing from the inside out and the only thing that is left are the individual fibers within that broccoli skin. So cool. That is really neat. So I think that is what has become of our slow versus fast food feeding. Let's just kind of dig around a little bit more and then we will look for that loofah, which I'm surprised I haven't run into it yet. Here's another broccoli stalk that we put in here. <laughs> These worms are amazing. All right, um, is that it? Nope, there's more mango seeds. Oh, strange. Oh, here we go, here we go. Look at that. That right there is the loofah, and they have gone all inside and out of it. There are castings all throughout it. And I wonder if they, you know, they like to go in and out of it. Does it feel good to them? A lot of times I'll see something like this harvest a, a lot of cocoons and maybe it's just because it rubs the cocoons off them as they're shedding them. But we'll keep updating this. This was a loofah that we used for about a year next to our kitchen sink and I rinsed it real well to get everything out of it. But the worms seem to be loving it. All right, we'll put that to the side. And then I'm just gonna kind of mix everything around a little bit before we give them our kitchen sink feeding. 
All right, so it looks like we have given this a pretty good mix up. So let's put a feeding zone in here and I'm just gonna kind of spread everything out. So I've got some room here and I've got a little bit of depth here. So we'll put some bedding and what we're gonna use for bedding is what I pulled out while we were sifting. So a bunch of this stuff, I'll just let it in. make room for it. So this is what I had in mind for kitchen sink feeding. I've got some chickpeas. I've got some oats. The Super Bowl was yesterday and we breaded some chicken fingers and we're going to put that in. And then I've got a bunch of food scraps. And so I'm throwing everything but the kitchen sink, but kind of am throwing the kitchen sink because a lot of this would be going into the kitchen sink garbage disposal which we haven't really used much because we are putting a lot of this in our worm bins. So let's go ahead and get this feeding started. So I think we'll start with some of the oats and then we'll put in some of this breading, followed by a bunch of chickpeas, garbanzo beans, same thing. And now I'm gonna lay down some of this frozen food. There's a lot of potato skins, some greens and carrot tops from our garden. Half of a banana, some avocado skins, which I haven't put in in a while. Got some tomato and banana, more avocado. And I think I'm gonna have to check on this because this might heat up. This is a lot of food and bedding and grains all in the same place. So I may need to check on this. We'll put in some grit, which is pulverized eggshells. And then of course we'll add some coffee. So they hadn't eaten in 12 days or they were eating all throughout the 12 days, but I haven't fed them in 12 days. So this is gonna be a pretty good feeding for them. And let's top it off with some more of the bedding. And if you like this experiment or the different experiments I do in this bin, I have two other bins where I do experiments and you can find them on my playlist. Go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing to my channel so you get notified if you ring the bell when I put out another video. And if you like this bin that I'm using, you can check out the different prices on the affiliate links I have. This is just a fabric pot, 20 gallon fabric pot. You could use a five gallon, seven gallon, whatever you want for whatever size bin you want. But I really like these and you can check out those links to see the prices and that kind of thing. All right, let's put the loofah back in there. There's mango seed and then I'm gonna bury this on top. I think I will at least come in here in about three or four days and check on this feeding just to make sure it hasn't heated up because that was just a lot of food. And it is mid-February in Florida, which means it's gonna start heating up. So hopefully the outside temperature combined with what I did here won't kind of overheat the bin. But if it does, I'll just come in here and mix up the food and that'll help dissipate the heat. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now.